The official Bitwarden CLI client is an absolute train wreck. It is incredibly difficult to use because every interaction you want to do is done through JSON. And it doesn't really give you much help in actually templating out what you actually need to fill in and explaining what those things in the template it does provide actually do and how to actually fill them out. But one of the things that does make the CLI client actually useful is basically anything you want to do with your Bitwarden Vault, give or take a couple of advanced features, can be done with the CLI client. So instead of relying on the client directly, what if we made a useful wrapper around it? Today we're looking at DMenu BW, which basically uses DMenu as a base for an interface to Bitwarden. Now, it doesn't cover every single feature that exists inside of Bitwarden, but it does cover the ones you're going to use on a daily basis, and I think in its current state, it is absolutely worth using. Now, when you do anything in this application, if you have libnotify installed or some compatible application, it will go and show you notification of what the application actually is trying to do. Now, this here isn't actually dmenu, so dmenu is going to be used for the interaction with the application. If you need to ever go and insert a password, if you have YAD installed, it's going to go and use YAD to actually prompt you for that. But if you don't have YAD installed, if you open up dmenu bw from a terminal, it will use that instead. The first time you open up this password prompt, it will also go and ask you for your email, but once you've done so once, then you just need to enter your password. One problem this application does have, which is good for security, but not really great for convenience, is every time you want to go and access your vault, you will need to go and re-enter your password. I would like an option to maybe keep it open for 5 minutes, 10 minutes, an hour. Even if just for like accessing a couple of things, it would be incredibly useful, and it would be incredibly useful when I'm trying to do something like this video. So this is the interface we get Basically, every time we open up dmenu bw, we have the create option, log out, sync, and then we have a list of all of our passwords. Now, this isn't actually showing the password, it's showing the name of the password. So, whatever site you've got it set up for, let's say you have a password for Facebook, or you have a password for YouTube, whatever you have it for, it'll show that name there. And then the thing after that is basically the ID it has inside of Bitwarden. So let's actually go and copy one of these passwords. If I go and press enter on this, basically what it's going to do is give you a couple of options. We can copy, edit, or delete. For now, I'm going to go and copy it. And it successfully copied the password. Now, I say password, but it'd be more accurate to say login because it's actually copied both the username and the password. So on Linux, you actually have access to three clipboards. We have the primary, the secondary, and then the clipboard. So if we go and do a middle mouse, that is going to print out the password. So that is printing out what's in our primary clipboard. If we go and do a right click and then a paste, that is going to print out from the clipboard. Not every application acknowledges the existence of the primary clipboard, but the ones that do will have it bound on the middle mouse button. This includes things like word processors, text editors, web browsers. Web browsers are basically the only one that need to matter though, and all of the major web browsers do support this. If you do want to be able to copy, basically the main reason to use the application, by default, it does rely on XClip to actually modify those clipboards. If you don't have XClip installed, you can modify the config to use something else, or you could send that information to a text file or wherever else you actually want the information to be saved. One option I just want to get out of the way is the syncing option, because... This one you generally won't need to use. The only times you need to use the sync option is when you are basically using two interfaces at the same time. So if you're using, say, the Electron client and you're using this one, or you're using this one and the web client, things like that. If you're not doing that, this option you generally don't need to do. Basically, all it's going to do is go and download the newest version of the vault, and upload whatever changes you've made, and make sure they're all synced nicely together. Not really a problem in any other situation though. While doing modifications through this interface isn't exactly the most convenient way of working, 
if you do need to do so, this does actually provide the option to do it. So let's go into, say, the one we were using earlier, and let's go over to the edit option. Now, by default, this is going to open up in Xterm and use Nano. I have reconfigured it, though, in the config file. It's very easy to do. Basically, it's the same way as just starting up the application. Now, by default, this is going to try to open it up in Xterm and Nano. I don't want to do that though, so that can very easily be reconfigured. Now I'm using Alacrity and also Envim. So basically, this is the same data we saw when we were making passwords over in the official client, but in this case, it actually has everything pre-filled out for you, including nulls, and it makes it very easy to work out how to actually add extra stuff into it. So, for example, this section right here in the official version was completely empty. I had no idea the username section was supposed to be called username or password was supposed to be called password. It could have been called something else or it could have been a capital or some other sort of spelling and it gave no indication of that actually being the case. This one, on the other hand, doesn't have that problem. The one problem I do have is because they are using the JSON that came straight from the Bitwarden server, it doesn't actually have any comments. I would like to see it maybe converted into some other form, let's say YAML or some other format that actually supports comments because JSON doesn't actually support them. And then once you've actually written out what you want to write out, it could strip the comments out and reconvert it back to JSON and be good to go. Now, everything works basically fine when it comes to actually updating the information. It's just that the notifications you might get are going to be a little bit weird. So if I go and quit out of this without saving, give it a second, it's going to say the edit was successful. I didn't actually change anything. And if I go and save it, but I don't actually make any changes, it's going to say the exact same thing as well. While this isn't really that big of a deal, it can lead you into a situation where it you think that maybe it's modified the data when it really hasn't. That would be very easy to fix. Basically, just check if it's been saved, check if the contents are different. If the contents aren't different, there's no point to try to update it. Now, deletions, on the other hand, have a very, very big red flag for me. So if we go and try to do a deletion, what you're going to notice is it's not actually going to prompt us. It's just going to go and delete it and... Now it's gone. This is a pretty big deal. It wouldn't be a big deal in a lot of other applications, but because we're working with passwords to accounts we could very easily lose, I need to have a confirmation option there. Even if it's not the default, there needs to at least be a flag for it to make sure I don't accidentally delete something. Now, Bitwarden does luckily have a trash system, so it's not the absolute end of the world, but it is still kind of annoying. If you have Yad installed, whenever you go and quit out of the password prompt, it will actually show you another prompt inside of a terminal, but some parts of the application don't actually work like that. So in the case of the create interface, if we go and click on that, let's say we want to create a new login, this will show us a YAD interface with all of the things that we can go and configure. I'll talk about this in just a moment, but if we go and quit out of this, it won't actually show you the same thing inside of your terminal. Instead, it's just going to give you this error message right here. And if you don't have YAD installed from the start, you'll just see this error message straight away. I don't exactly know why it's like this. There's no reason why it couldn't fall back to maybe setting it up inside of your editor or maybe have an interface inside a terminal like before. I would really like to see that because the bit of inconsistency I don't think makes a lot of sense. Anyway, back to the actual creation. So from here we can go and make a login, secure note, card and identity. But for now, we're just going to be working with a login. So this interface gives you the option to go and set a name. So that's the name it shows you in that list. And the name it also shows you inside of like the Bitwarden plugin inside of your web browser. You can set a username, password, a URI. So the website that's going to activate for and then the folder it's going to be inside of if you want it to be a favorite, and also some notes if you like having notes attached to things as well. Now, you might be wondering what this password actually is because we didn't go and set one yet. So in my case, that's going to be a randomly generated password, which is something I've set up to do in my config. So if we go into the config directory inside of the D menu BW directory, and then inside of the config.json, here is how you actually do that. This command is something you can go and set up yourself. You can have it be as complex as you want. This is just an example from the GitHub. Now, 
there is one very, very, very major problem that exists in this application if you don't include a password gen command. And that is the password it's going to put here is the password you used to log into Bitwarden. Why it's like that, I have absolutely no idea. That is absolutely insane. I thought it was something that just happened as a fluke. I tried it a couple of extra times and it continued to happen. So this field should be blank if there is not a password gen command. I don't know why it wasn't. Another big problem it has is it doesn't give you any indication of what fields are absolutely essential and if you happen to be missing any of those fields when you go to save it, it doesn't prompt you to go and fill them out. Basically, we just see that same error message that we saw before. So the only one you need to have there from what I've seen is a name. I don't think you even need to have a password as long as the name is there it will work. So let's go and add some information. I'm gonna set the name to be video. I'll set the username to be Brody. We'll leave the password as is and we'll leave the rest of the fields empty. If I go and click on okay in the bottom right hand corner, that is going to give us a notification in a second, creation successful. And if I go back into D menu BW, we'll see it's actually in the list. As we can see, right down the bottom here, we have the video option, and that is the one that we just went and made. If I go and copy that, and let's go and, uh, I don't know, open it up in a web browser, for example, if I do a right click and a paste, there's the username, and there's the password. Back to the config file for just a moment, there's not a ton of stuff in here you'd really want to actually change. The only thing you may want to touch is if you are using things like secure notes, cards, and identities, by default, it doesn't actually have copy commands set up for those. It only has the copy commands set up for the login. So if you want to copy any of the information from those things, you will have to go and work out what information firstly you want to copy and then add it into this list and then you'll be good to go. I don't know what information is actually being stored in those items, so I can't exactly help with that. Also, you may have noticed that the D menu prompt we had was stopping at 10 elements. The reason why it was doing that is because in the config here, we've actually got it set to stop at 10 elements. So if you want to have maybe 20, 30, however many you want to have, maybe you even don't want to have it to be the drop down list. You instead want it to be the, uh, the regular sort of D menu where it's like along the top. You can go and set that up as well. This option allows you to pass in options directly to the D menu. So overall, while it isn't perfect and it does still require a lot of polishing around the edges, I think in its current state, it actually is entirely usable, and if you heavily use dmenu anyway, this might actually be able to fit into your workflow. I would like to see some of those things changed, especially the thing with keeping the vault actually open, but apart from that, it's perfectly fine to work with. I still like to use the web extension though because basically the only time I actually access my passwords in Bitwarden is in my web browser anyway. So for me, it just makes sense to do it like that. But if you have things stored in Bitwarden that aren't just in your web browser, let's say you have a game client login, things like that. Maybe having it through some other means might actually make a lot of sense. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I think that'll be everything for me. And before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim Donald, Logan Michael, Andrew Mitchell, Nathan, David Carl, Will, Brennan, Chica Bento, Jamie Joseph, Josh, Michael, Peter D, Stephen T, through Tony Jashar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go on support work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, sell, leave a pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brewery Robertson Plays. And I've got this channel available over on Odyssey. I think that's it. Yeah. So, I'm out.